Yes, uh, good morning and thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Francisco Rivas. I, I work for a research group. Uh, we did a, a special academic work over the release of Debian. We have been doing that study uh, since HAM. Um, so let's get started. Uh, the schedule is, uh, I'm going to do uh, an introduction, uh, a little review of uh, the project Debian and especially of that of the release. Uh, I'm going to talk about the study, uh, the specific goals, some issues that we ha we had to embrace uh, with some packages and some some kind of things that uh, got hard to study o in some way. Uh, I'm going to describe the methodology, uh, of course the results, uh, some conclusions is a review of of the presentation uh, and a future work. Uh, we are, go I'm going to describe the tools and of course the section of questions. Uh, as we are a, a group of um, researchers, uh, academic researchers, uh, we, we have, um, uh, we are very interested to understand the evolution of the free, free, libre, so free libre open source software. Um, we, we have been doing some empirical and, and quantitative studies over free software, uh, specifically uh, using data mining techniques. Uh, we, are, we are involved in some uh, projects to study a larger scale of, of software. Um, we, we want to understand uh, how the communities of free software are evolving and are evolving. Uh, we think that Debian is a good reference, it's a good base to start our studies to use it uh, as a large uh, compilation of software, of free software, of course. Uh, this is a study, as I said before, is, this is a, an update of a study that we, we have been doing so, since HAM. Uh, we are also interested in understanding how Debian is growing and of course, in, the, in its community. Um, and one important thing is uh, uh, to understand how the project is embracing uh, the increase of the complexity and, and the large scale of, uh, scale of, of software. Uh, you, you can find some information about the group and some other uh, uh, research that we have uh, done. Uh, as a little overview of Debian, support several architectures. Uh, this number is, is um, it's um, under discussion. Some people said uh, um, some some of them are architectures, some others not. So it's a reference number. Uh, Debian uh, is an in independent of any company. Um, about uh, one and 500 of dedicated and very good developers and maintainers. That number is uh, an approximation because depending on the study, the attributes of each, um, each developer that you get from the database of Debian, uh, that number can, inc can uh, increase or, or decrease uh, if you take in account the the account of the developer is active or disabled, for example. We think Debian is the only project that has a commitment, a real co commitment, using the Debian social contract and the Debian free software guidelines to develop, and uh, it's, a it's a kind of, co of commitment with uh, its users. Uh, the Debian policy, of course, especially inter interest to including uh, major applications, that's what that's one of the re that it's that's one of the reasons that mm, Debian it's late to get to release some of of its software. Um, uses a Linux kernel uh, and supports other and other, other ones. It's important that BSD kernel because later we are going to see the the how how the community is working hardly in the key FreeBSD kernel. Uh, 
Of course, the target of Debian uh, is to build, to construct a, a complete uh, release of free software according to the Debian free software guidelines. Those are the releases that we have been studying. Um, about Lenny, it was released uh, on February. Uh, has 12,000 uh, 12, of source packages and 23,000 uh, binary packages. It was released after 22 months of uh, hard work and development and improvement. Includes open GDK, GDK 6, uh, has several images. Uh, one of them is uh, the Blu-ray image. Uh, include most of the software, most of the software, sta mo most of the stable and mature, uh, mature software uh, available. Uh, it's FFHS 2.3 compliant and support uh, LSB software. Or if the specific goals of our study is to estimate the size of Debian is speaking about since the, sign, the, the from the point of view of source lines of code, it's a good measure um, to understand how it's growing since how Debian is growing since the the first releases. Um, as I said, we measure the the distribution the, the size of the distribution uh, starting from the point of view of source lines of code, of physical source lines of code of code. Mm, for us, uh, physical lines of code is a single line, no matter if it's uh, sep several separate for um, commas or something like that. Um, we identify the largest, the largest packages of the distribution. Um, we identify the, language, the most used languages used uh, in its packages, in, in those packages. Um, we measured the, the modification to the upstream packages. Uh, actually, we measure the size of the uh, source code, the size of the uh, package with a patch, with a developer patch, and um, we, we measure the size without that directory. directory. We are going to see that uh, later. Uh, we do a comparison with previous releases with uh, another studies. And finally, we do a, a, a cost est effort estimation, uh, applying a, a classical model called Kokomo. I'm going to, to explain that later. Some issues that we had to embrace to, that, to, to do the study, because there are a lot of mm, sources of imprecisions and, and mistakes, uh, is the du duplicated code across the packages, different releases of the, th the same packages, forked versions as GCC, for example, uh, patchwork. Uh, we, we took uh, in account the, th the fact that, for example, GNAT, it's uh, a lot of patches over GCC, but finally, it's a totally, dif totally different software than GCC. So we uh, do a, a list with parget or parched um, software that we cannot take in account for the study because it duplicate the code or some stuff like that. We we um, choose um, uh, the best representative software for each of those uh, pack uh, duplicated packages. About the methodology. In summary, we download the package, unpack and pack it. We uh, do uh, the count. Uh, I'm going to, s to explain uh, later what count means. And we do the sums and get the results of, of the study. The results are the physical line, source lines of code. This is the methodology Mark explained. We download the sources that GSGZ, uh, select the packages to be analyzed, that it's uh, the list of target, um, uh, packages uh, that, uh, that it, it, they're not going to be uh, uh, taking account for the study. For each package, we download it, extract the, the, the source directory, apply a slow count, 
I'm going to explain. Slow count is a, um, a tool to, it's, to analyze the source code the, uh, of a package, uh, getting information uh, such as uh, which languages uh, uh, is was used to build the package, um, numbers of lines of code, and the estimation cost, uh, uh, the estimation of cost effort uh, done. We apply the package is uh, the the patch uh, after that that uh, first application of a slow count to understand uh, the influence of the influence of the developer over the uh, source code. We apply the slow count again, and after that we delete the Debian source to understand, the, to uh, get the measure of the final package. And after that we apply a slow count. So we got three measures in each step. Uh, we start information in some uh, temporary files. And finally, we get the results, the statistic, and that stuff. Speaking about the results, we got the, the upstream packages. It's uh, 280 millions of source lines of code. Uh, about the Debian source packages, including the directory, is the, is the, 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 the results of the apply the patch is uh, 323 million source lines of code. It's a real measure of the release. And the Debian source packages is uh, 300 million source lines of code. Compared with the uh, uh, previous versions, uh, we got Lenin's 12.78 uh, times ham the the second release that it it, it had it, it uh, had uh, 25 um, million source lines of code, so it's interesting to see how Debian have been growing through the the time the 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 years. So it's, uh, the difference between Edge uh, released two years ago and Lenny. Um, it's uh, near from 40 million lines of code. This is the, the graph that shows uh, the most used languages in the whole, distribu the whole release. And we can see ANSI say is still the, the, the most used language to develop uh, the software in, in Debian. Uh, in the second place, we got uh, C++ and is still growing. Uh, in cases such as, uh, I don't know, uh, Evins, uh, they change from C to C++. And the third place, we got uh, Shell. And one of the things that sur surprised us was the, the constant uh, growing of Java. Uh, I got another table. Uh -huh. This table shows uh, for each release of Debian, so I, I, I got the, the other ones. Uh, we can see how C is in single release of Debian is in the first place. This number uh, is the rank of uh, C in each release. Uh, the amount of line, source lines of code and its, represent its portion respect to the whole release. As you can see, in spite of uh, the source lines of code, so source code is increasing, they, their use, its use is uh, decreasing constantly. Uh, in potato, in woody, it's still less. Huh? And in Lenny, in Lenny, continue it's increasing the its lines of code but but decreasing its use because other languages are increasing uh, as you can see java starts in the 15th place and it's increasing each release uh, 
as you can see, it's the fourth place. It's interesting. And finally, with 15 million source lines of code in Lenny. Actually, one, one thing that surprised us was uh, it's uh, over Python and Pair, actually over Lisp. If you see the previous releases of, uh, you can see Lisp in the fourth place. It's very interesting. So this is a, another graph that shows the the increase of, of use of the of the use of C and the increasing of C++. Uh, so some comments about that is ANSI C and Lisp use is going down. It's interesting because uh, in spite of it's always in the first place, it's decreasing its use. Uh, uh, maybe because um, other languages are, are most used or something like that. Um, Java, Python, and Perl, their use is increasing constantly. Uh, and almost six millions of lines of source lines of code is, are right in Python and, and five on Perl. About the packages, we can see uh, this, this, uh, this is very interesting because if you see the previous studies of the packages uh, speaking about Edge, the OpenOffice package uh, was uh, had more source lines of code, about four millions over the Linux kernel. But between the 2.6.80, uh, uh, 80, uh, and this version of the kernel, the kernel in include 10 millions of lines of code. Now Linux.6, uh, that version of Linux kernel has f f 59 li li source lines of code. And the difference between uh, li the kernel and the open, o and open office is uh, about 3 million. Uh, as, I, as I said before, uh, the K FreeBSD kernel uh, is increasing uh, it, in the rank. The community is working hardly in, in it. Uh, this graph shows in, an, in a logarithmic uh, scale uh, the distribution of the packages. In the x-axis, uh, we, we ordered the packages uh, uh, by its size. The first one is the most, is the package with uh, the, lar the, the large amount of lines of code. It's similar to the previous uh, studies, but with ledge packages here. Uh, some comments about uh, the packages. KFBSD is growing up. Uh, as I said, in, in Edge, uh, it was uh, at 11 uh, position. As you can see, it's in the 9 position. Um, the source lines of code for package is decreased, uh, decreased uh, in Lenny from H that uh, had about 28,000 um, li lines of code uh, for package. Uh, one interesting thing is if, if you see this table, most of the software in the top 10 is uh, end user software or, develop or development software. It's interesting because it's uh, the community effort. Actually, this uh, position of OpenGDK can explain in some way the increase of uh, Java uh, in the rank of, of, the, of the languages most used. Uh, another very interesting thing is the top uh, 100 packages uh, share is lower in the contribution of the top tens, uh, the top 100 packages. Um, the contribution to the to the release is decreasing 
from, from 64 uh, in Ham to 32 in Leni. That, that means uh, the community is working in another packages, not, not, not only in the, in the same as, uh, as uh, uh, previous releases. So the contribution is homogeneous, I guess. Uh, speaking about the cost effort estimations, uh, we apply a, a Cocomo model. It's used uh, uh, in classical software engineering to estimate cost, costs uh, and efforts um, to develop private software or proprietary software. Um, it's hard to find or, um, a model to uh, estimate effort and costs uh, in free software. Uh, so we, we th from this point of view, we can understand if, uh, if a, a team of, or a enterprise or a, or a software factory decide to create a Linux release, a Debian, uh, a, a Debian 5 release, release today, uh, they are going to need uh, a, 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 an, an effort of near uh, 84,000 persons per year. And they need nine years to develop um, a release from the scratch, every single package. Actually, this number is interesting because it's more or less that Debian has since the first releases. And it costs six, um, six, six uh, thousand millions of euros uh, approximately. Uh, comparing Debian with uh, another s uh, s operating systems, uh, we can see this release uh, compared with, with other has uh, a large number of, of source lines of code, which is very interesting because the difference is four millions. Uh, some conclusions, it's uh, a review of the slides. Um, Lenny was released on February. Uh, it has uh, 323 millions of source lines of code, an estimate cost of six thousand millions of, of heroes. Uh, I need an uh, estimate effort to develop from the scratch of nine years and 84,000 uh, persons per year. ANSI says C++, Shell, Java, and Python are the most used languages. Um, actually, C rep Debian represents the, the, the largest compilation of so free software uh, until now. Speaking about the future work, we want to uh, study in detail um, the evolution of the, of, of, of the Debian project. Uh, we want to study the authorship and the licenses. It, it is a, a very interesting field. Uh, we want to study uh, the, uh, analyze the, the volunteer activity to understand why the number of developers is not growing constantly uh, or as we expect with uh, that big community around the project. Uh, we want to study the source code management systems, the mailing lists, the bug tracker systems. Uh, actually, we have uh, s three tools for each one of them. Uh, you can find more information and detail, detailed information of, of the study in that, that, in that uh, address. Um, you can find uh, statistics for each package uh, and cost, cost effort estimation for each package and uh, the previous uh, studies. Uh, speaking about the tools that we used to, uh, di to do the study, we collected uh, the data uh, using a, a set of Python scripts that is download the source.gz, um, extract it, select the packages, and uh, unpack it and, and apply the slow count in, in each step. Uh, a slow count, you can get it. 
Uh, the copyright analysis will be done, uh, uh, we hope, soon uh, with a, a tool that we are develop, develop, developing uh, now is called Piternity. And we got uh, tools to analyze another rich full sources of information about the community. Uh, actually, we, we have been doing some other studies, study, studied in uh, genome or KDA, KDA um, using those tools. This is our research group, or at least part of, of us. Um, and that's it. Please, question. Hi there. Um, I think it's valuable that you're, you're counting stuff up. Um, though, for me, a uh, slot count is a is an indicative of, of bloat. So um, I was wondering, have you have you done like stats of like say the the Debian minimal system, and see how it's grown over time? Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? Because uh, well, one thing I participate in is uh, another community called Suckless.org. You should check it out. The aim of this community is quite interesting: is to to make the code better by making the the lines of code. Uh, uh, less. So I hope you um, concentrate on that sort of slot count angle that, you know, more code isn't necessarily a good thing. It's usually a bad yes. thing, actually. Yes. Uh, it depends on of the point of view. You, you can see, oh, more people use development software for the distribution. Mm -hmm. But the one of the things that we are very interested in is to understand if that is good or is bad or is indifferent. Well, I can tell you, I can tell you, lines of code is a bad thing. <laughs> More lines of code is a bad thing. So, so it'd be really good if you you track like you know minimal Debian mm -hmm. and and just to see over time how things have well bloated, and um, and and target those sort of things to to make them make them better by by hopefully getting developers interested in in cleaning up bloated yes. software. Yes, that that that's one of of the things uh, uh, that's. I, f I forgot to say that are preliminary results, and and that is one of the reasons that we we want to uh, analyze in detail, deeply, th that information. Actually, one of the things, one of the most important things is the the source of uh, mistakes or imprecision of, of errors that we have we have to embrace. So it's totally correct. <laughs> uh, I think. Just merely saying that bloat is bad is slightly um, tricky with Debian because we're adding more bits of software and you're always going to add lines of code for that. Uh, the, the, the number of lines of code in, in the minimal system is relevant. What I'm actually um, wondering might be quite interesting to know is uh, I saw you were um, taking the, no, uh, the lines of code in, in the package just with upstream and then with Debian, and then with Debian, with the Debian dir remove, which gives you the amount of patch uh, extra lines of code we're providing. Um, uh, uh, what might be interesting to see is how, over time, that changes, particularly as a, 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 a ratio of the total amount of code that's in there. So obviously, as we get more software, we'll get more local patches. But does that, as a percentage of the total amount of software, grow? Or or, or gets more, and I think that's quite interesting. Yes, yes, yes. We are taking that in account. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested in the social um, social background, and I I have done uh, some estimation how how um, big the community is. And um, it would be nice to see the numbers again. How many developers? Well, let's say 1,500. How many packages? And then it's interesting to see how, what is the um, average package number a Debian developer maintains. And then I looked at a, a little bit around and I see um, every package is estimated 
a group around not Debian developer, one Debian developer, but 10 people around uh, working on the software and upstream. And then to estimate how many people are involved in this complete process. That would be nice to have uh, new numbers. Perhaps yeah. you, you can estimate it from your numbers. So it, it's, it's interest to compare it with uh, what a company has to do or to find all these testers, all these uh, persons. Uh, this th uh, has also something to say about the quality, what you can deliver. Yes, that, that's very interesting. Uh, so, uh, excuse me, when, when you say uh, the people involved in the whole process, uh, what prof process are, are, are you talking I, about? I, I, um, I would say this um, triangle from the um, complete person involved and then dropping down to packages to maintainer. So how many people are involved? Because this has something to do with, um, well, I'm a sociologist and I'm interested to get free software in school. So that's my main purpose. School of Linux, Debian Edu, I'm working in, doing the project leading in Germany. So it's, it's important to see what political impact this means. Oh. For the freedom of knowledge, freedom of access to knowledge. And all this was behind uh, sometimes not spoken open, open what motivates to do this job and do this work. Right. This, this is interest for me for political ideological reasons. Yeah. Uh, one thing that could be said about the communities is that um, the licenses are not only a legal document, it's also a declaration of which community you are part of. You have the G the uh, GPL community, you have the BSD community, the Perl community. Do you have any numbers on the uh, relative uh, importance of the different licenses in Debian? And no, no. If they are growing or <coughs> or decreasing? No, no precisely that is one, one that is part of the future work. Right. Actually, we are writing a tool uh, to do that thing. To extract right. the license and s get some uh, some statistics, what what kind of license, what license is most used, and and that stuff. Right. Yes, that it's, it's, it's a it's a, a one of the most important things yep. that we are doing now. Any <laughs> uh, uh, a question? No. Okay, then let's take a speak again. Thank you.